in the classification of bone we have studied the under the classification long bone short bone and flat bone irregular bone so now we are going to concent concentrate on the sesamoid bone and limitic bone this can be asked as a short notes so very important thing which is you have to know about the sesamoid bone so this sesamoid bone that is a sesam that is a seed like this is a c say the word which is sesamoid is derived from the arabic word almost all in our medical faculty we are going to get the greek words so that greek and latin words are more uh, included in the medical literatures so in this you have to remember this sesamoid word which is taken arabic word that is the one which is we call as a c say that is a word which is c same that is like a seed like so these are the small nodules bony nodules which are develops in the tendons of the muscle and that is we are going to call it in a sesamoid bone so sesamoid bone definition is this is a sesamoid word is derived from arabic word and that is a c same and this arabic word c same means seed like and this seed like means they are the small bony nodules which are develops in the tendons of the muscle and such bones we are going to call as a sesamoid bone we are going to get in the sesamoid bone largest sesamoid bone is the patella so small one other bone a uh, bones which are sesamoid we have the pigiform bone in the hand we are going to get that is the carpal bone in that we get the pigiform bone so all these you have to remember in the sesamoid bone and what is the characteristics of sesamoid so these sesamoid bones you have to remember first they are develops in the tendons of the muscle then second one they ossify after birth their development takes place after birth then third one is they are not having the haversian system and they are devoid of periosteum almost all the bone which is uh, they are having the coverings the covering of bones is called as in a periosteum that is absent haversian system is a medullary cavity that is a bone main system haversian system that is not available that is absent then they ossify after birth then they are develops in the tendons of the that is a muscle so these all most important uh, peculiarities or characteristics features of the that is the sesamoid bone so you have to remember these sesamoid bones developing in the tendons so what is the importance there where there are tendons are having the maximum during the movements they are having the maximum frictions if they are moving there is a maximum frictions or chances are there that site we are going to have the this is my bone so that at the sites of the frictions of the tendons of the muscle these bones are develops and those we call as an sesamoid bone so you have to remember what is a sesamoid bone how the word is derived arabic to the seed like and c same then what is the definition of sesamoid then i have told the characteristics or the peculiarities of the sesamoid and what is the example i have given they are given as a patella and pigiform bone and these bones bony nodules small on on the tendons in the tendons they are developing they will act like a pulley when muscle is contracting contracting and moving there is a chances of friction this friction is prevented as these bones will act like a pulley so that you have to remember they develop in the tendon because where there is a chances of these tendons or frictions are common so that to prevent the nature is given the these bones sesamoid bones in our body to act like a pulley so this is all about the sesamoid bone next important classification which is you are going to get that is a limitic bone so these are the bones almost all of us studying the short bone long bone irregular bone small bone these two classification widely you have to explain that is a nemetic bone nem means this word which is a 
mean that is the means air so that you are going to have the air that is the air filled spaces in the bone air filled spaces in the bones they are formed and they are lined by the mucous membrane or epithelium and such bones we are going to call as an nematic bone and this neem word means you have to remember air so what is the definition of nematic bone nematic bones are those bones which are the having the air filled spaces in the bone and uh, these air filled spaces which are present in a bone and that lines by the mucous membrane or epithelium and that is we call as a nematic bone so these nematic bones are always present near and around the nasal cavity they are not in the other parts of the body these bones nematic bones they are only present near and around the nasal cavity so that these nasal cavities bones like uh, we have the this area we have the maxillary bone then this is the frontal we are going to get ethmoidal we have then sphenoidal bones sphenoidal ethmoidal maxillary and frontal bones these all are the important examples of the nematic bone so that nematic bones are the air filled spaces found in the bones such bones we call as a nematic bone and these nematic bones are always present near and around the nasal cavity and uh, they are lined by the mucous membrane and epithelium so that these are named as a nematic neem means air air filled spaces or air air containing bones which we call as a nematic bone next you have to remember what are the uh, important functions of these nematic bone these are very important question is asked in the oral what is the functions of bone is different what is the functions of nematic bone don't tell the functions of bone here so nematic bone functions is different sismoid bone already i have told they prevent the friction of the tendon of muscle then i am talking about nematic bone in this nematic bone you have to tell the they make the bone more lighter skull is not heavy as it is a bone you take it is a very solid that time it will containing the uh, compact variety of bone bone marrow but these bones which are there their air air filled space is there around the nose skull is made lighter so that heaviness or the weight of the skull is reduced because of the presence of the nematic bone and they make the more economic bone bone making more economic and lighter weight is reduced the skull then second one uh, these nematic bone add the resonance to the voice whatever we talk that is all relates to the adding the resonance to the voice is done by the these nematic bone then you have to mention the nematic bone they are present nasal region near and around so any cold and cough any you have the common cold that time there is a all changes and infection of these sinuses so that is the all important relating to the nematic bone so examples of nematic bone are you have to tell the uh, frontal bone maxillary bone ethmoidal bone and sphenoidal these are the four things you have to know so that we have covered the under the classification uh, i have left the sismoid bone detail and nematic bone other all long bone short bone irregular flat all we have covered so this is the one which is you have to remember the next question which is you have to go for the that is uh, what is the structure of bone so when we uh, study the all parts which is you are going to get gross structure how the gross structure of bone is appears i have told in the structural classification of the bone when you take the bone section when you see the bone in this way which is you are going to get as a bone on the outer aspect when you take the section of the bone longitudinally so you are going to get as a bone as a that is a structurally looks like this way so whatever you are uh, remember when uh, we take the section of the bone so all that structures we are seeing that we study in the gross structure of bone so in this we can divide the when you see appearance of the bone in this way then we are going to take the section 
then uh, in the section we are going to have the how it appears we are going to have the most important outermost strong strength of the bone that is we call as in a compact variety of bone so you have to remember compact variety of bone which is on the outermost uh, we are going to get in the bones then at the ends towards the tips and ends of the bone which is we have in the network like or network like or the we have the that is the one which is called as a sponge like appearance appearance is sponge like that is not the sponge like sponge like structure it is appearance which is towards the end and this is we call as a spongy variety of bone and this both the side we have the compact variety of bone so this is very important uh, my dear students you have to remember the when we see the bone it appears like this when we take the section you are going to get the outermost strength of the bone where uh, almost all is by the compact variety of bone so you get compact and we have medullary cavity then we have the at the ends of the bone towards the ends both the end if it is a long bone then we have the sponge like structure so that sponge like structure which is you are going to get that is a we call as a spongy bone and compact so this is the one which is you have to remember important thing in the gross structure of long bone when we see the bone as i have shown here this cut section you are going to see exactly as it represents the book picture so you have to see the cut section here half is cut and remaining all is shown like a below this is shown like a normal one so that you have to remember when st structure of gross structure of bone is asked you have to write detail about the compact and the spongy bone and one more thing you have to remember here uh, the part which is other parts which are we are going to get it so this is the one which is you have to remember in the compact and cancellous variety of bone so these two structures which is we are going to see then when you see this diagram you are going to get the one which is a artery which is a, you are going to get blood supplying to the bone so now after the structure of bone we are proceeding for the what is the blood supply of long bone so this blood supply of long bone which is supplied by the nutrient artery so whatever this is suppose this is the humerus then you are going to get the region is arm that region main artery branch will be the nutrient artery for the humerus means regional main artery branch goes and supplies to the that is a bone which is we are going to call as a that is a nutrient artery so it passes into the passing from the nutrient foramen then it enters the obliquely passing into the nutrient foramen it enters obliquely crossing the cortex this is the compact bone obliquely enters into the medullary cavity and divides into ascending and descending branch so that we are going to have the blood supply of long bone so i am going to explain the what is the blood supply of long bone blood supply of long bone is by the nutrient artery this nutrient artery is a branch of the regional main artery branch and that is we supply to the bone we are going to call as a nutrient artery and this nutrient artery which is enters through the nutrient foramen then it travels obliquely in the cortex then enters into the medullary cavity dividing ascending branch and descending branch in the medullary cavity so it is supplying the uh, that is a blood supply to the elongated part or the shaft of the bone then supply to the ends those are the we call epiphyseal artery then towards the end which is we are going to get the diaphyseal part that is the diaphyseal artery means we are going to have the nutrient artery epiphyseal artery diaphyseal artery then covering of the bone is called as a periosteum those are the periosteal artery four arteries you have to remember when you are discuss the blood supply of the long bone one i have told the supplying the main nutrient artery ascending descending branch most important landmark you have to remember it travels in the cortex obliquely not straight it is traveling obliquely 
passing through the nutrient foramen, entering into the medullary cavity and divides into ascending and descending trunk. So this is the one which is you all remember. Then above epiphyseal artery, metaphyseal artery and nutrient artery. Covering of the bone which is supplied by the covering of bone is periosteum that is supplied by the periosteal artery. So this is the one which is you all remember in the blood supply of long bone. Then going to the when we go to the other bone cells and have a same system, uh, these are the uh, we are going to get. But uh, uh, before that you all remember what are the parts of the young bone? When you see the uh, long bone which is I have shown just this is in this picture. In this I have told the uh, we are going to get epiphysis. What are the parts of the young bone? I have told the structure of the long bone, blood supply of the long bone. Now I am talking about the what is the uh, parts of the young bone. Question will be asked structure of the bone, parts of the bone, blood supply of the bone and we get the parts of the young bone that should not be confused with the anything. So we are going to get the epiphysis. These are the tips and ends of the long bone. Can you see the long bone? You are going to get the tips and ends of the long bone which are ossified by the secondary centers of the ossification. You have to just remember ossification is the next topic which is we are dealing that is ossification means process of formation of bone. It is by primary and secondary. Primary before birth, secondary after birth. That much you have to remember. Here you will understand the first epiphysis and this part which is we call metaphysis and this is a we are diaphysis. So what is the epiphysis? Tips and ends of the bone which are there and they are ossified by secondary center called as an that is the we call as an epiphysis. Then what is the diaphysis? Elongated or the sap of the long bone. Elongated sap of the long bone which is ossified by primary centers. And that is we call as a diaphysis. Then we have this region is a metaphysis. Epiphysial end of diaphysis. This is epiphysial end of diaphysis which is we call as a metaphysis. And that metaphysis, this region, upper end and the shaft is fused together and that region where the metaphysis is the zone for the growing area of the bone. Growing zone of the bone is metaphysis. Bone grows not upper end and lower end. It grows at the metaphysis level. That is the ends of the diaphysis. What is the growing zone of the bone? Long bone is, you have to remember, metaphysis. So what is the epiphysis? Tips and ends of the long bone ossified by secondary center. Diaphysis is the elongated sap which is uh, ossified by primary centers of ossification. Then metaphysis is the epiphysial end of diaphysis that is called as a metaphysis and that is a growing zone of the bone. So this is what you have to remember in the structure of the bone in that we have studied the what are the parts of the end bone, uh, epiphysis, diaphysis, metaphysis and this plate which is epiphysis and metaphysis are joined and that is by the epiphysial plate of cartilage. Then we have the medullary cavity I have shown in the bone that is the medullary cavity is filled by the bone marrow. It is the two types we are going to get that is yellow and red bone marrow that is your periosteum you are going to get covering of the bone. So periosteum then we have the medullary cavity, then I have told the epiphysis, diaphysis, metaphysis, epiphysial plate of, uh, that is we are going to get the cartilage. This is the one epiphysial plate. So it will be help to join the, after the fusion, growth of the bone is stops. Before fusion, you can, development of the bone is starts. Means maximum you can increase your height and all up to the 18 to 20 years. Once the ossification center fused together, then there is no increase in the height of the person. Before that only, you have to increase this. Uh, otherwise, once the growth or uh, fusion of the epiphysis, metaphysis takes place, there is no growth of the height in the any person. So this is the one which is mechanism you have to understand in the development of the bone, that is a parts of the end bone. 
then after this you have to remember the few points which is i am going to discuss in this uh, you have to remember the most important uh, that is a part which is uh, study of bones these are the common terms which are we use usually we use the foramen tubercle trochanter all and these all i have explained foramen which is in the bone explanation we use these terms that means you have to tell the opening of the hole then you get the fissure narrow slit it is it is a opening small narrow slit which is we are going to get the between the bones then that is we call fissure fossa it is a shallow depression how we come across just now uh, hip bone studying iliac fossa mm -hmm. that is the one which is a shallow depression you have to remember sulcus also it is a groove which is your this is a narrow slit fissure sulcus is a groove which is you are going to get meatus it is a tube like passage or the canal tube like passage or canal that is we call it as a meatus so these are the common terms we use when the bone is explained or when we study condyle you get the condyles and the trochanters all those condyle large round protuberance large round elevated part of the bone which is we call as a protuberance facet we are going to get the flat articular that is a surface it is a flat articular surface because other bone has to take articulation so that we call as a facet then trochanter very large projection on the bone there is a large projection like it is there then we are going to call as a trochanter then tuberosity i have told in the tuberosity it is a rounded roughened projection how i have shown you the tubercle of iliac crest ischial spine and ischial tuberosity they are not the same they are the different so that is you have to remember in the tuberosity so these are the few things which is you have to remember in the uh, terms explanation of the both that is okay so this is what uh, today is my lecture which is we have discussed the first that is a nemetic bone sismoid bone with the example then i have told the gross structure of the bone blood supply of the long bone then i have told the what are the parts of the young bone so these are the four to five small short notes we have discussed in the that is a relating to the bone next topic will be the ossification how the bone develops that is a important what is the law of ossification what is the medical legal importance of the bones that we are going to study so this is today's lecture most important highlight that is the classification of the bone in that sismoid and nemetic bone that is okay